Hi, it's Dr. Lavanya for One Family Pediatrics. Today we're going to be talking about babysitter training and it's for, intended for kids 11 years and up. We'll be discussing how to be the best babysitter, how to promote yourself, and what to do if there's a first aid situation. So let us know what you think and enjoy. The objectives of babysitter training include what makes a great babysitter, fun game ideas, choking hazards, household hazards, first aid, and marketing yourself. What makes a great babysitter? Being prepared and early to your job is a must. Parents are more likely to call you back and recommend you to their friends if they find you responsible and trustworthy. As a babysitter, you should know CPR and basic first aid. You should always be organized. Knowing important facts about the child you are babysitting is a must. This notepad is a good example of how to keep important facts on hand during a job. Always note any special instructions. Does the child have any allergies? If so, what are the specifics and what do you need to do in case they have an allergic reaction? Does the child have any medical conditions that would prevent them from participating in certain activities? Do the parents have a set dinner time, bedtime, and allotted time for movies and iPad use? The kids will try to get you to stay up late and watch movies. These are important facts to note down during a babysitting job. Another characteristic of an amazing babysitter is that they are active and fun. An energetic, creative babysitter is able to play with the child and stay engaged in their activities. If a babysitter can come up with their own games, they can keep children engaged for much longer. A babysitter that sits on their phone all day is unprofessional and can lead to injuries to the child or damage to the home. It is very important that a babysitter be able to establish boundaries. Although children love to play and have a great time, they crave routine and structure. Kids need to have a set dinner time and bedtime. An amazing babysitter is watchful and aware. Again, being on the phone can be dangerous. A great babysitter is watching for accidents and trying to prevent injuries and disasters. Sometimes children miss their parents or feel scared. Making sure you can comfort a child and help them through their fears and sorrows can go a long way. Kids are constantly on the move and always changing their minds. It is important to be flexible and allow wiggle room for changes. What are some fun activities? If you are outdoors, you can play on the playground, play hide and seek, color with chalk, ride bikes, tag, play hopscotch, or do backyard bowling. Indoors, you can do crafts, board games, dance parties, puzzles, color, movies, though this should not be the majority of your night. Always be on the lookout for choking hazards for children under five. Choking foods include hot dogs, cut them lengthwise instead of round pieces, nuts and seeds, whole grapes, popcorn, and chewing gum. Round foods such as grapes or peas should be cut in half or smashed. Non-food items include Coins, marbles, small balls, marker caps, buttons, batteries, magnets, and small toys. Monitor the home for hazards. Outlets are dangerous, so are steps. Make sure there is a baby gate for children under three. Chemicals such as cleaning products that are under the sink should be locked away. Hot pans, hot foods, stove tops, and ovens can cause burns. Door hinges can cause finger jams. And with furniture, make sure there is nothing that can be pulled down by a young child and no sharp, sharp corners. Watch for hanging cords on blinds that can cause choking hazards. Always have a first aid kit with you. This should include sterile gauze, bandages in multiple sizes, tweezers, safety pins, non-latex disposable gloves, disposable instant cold packs, triple antibiotic ointment, 1% hydrocortisone cream, calamine lotion, alcohol wipes, and antiseptic wipes. If you are CPR certified, include a mouthpiece for administering CPR. Know the proper way to take off gloves and how to use the various ointments and creams in your kit. Reading a first aid manual can help you understand when to use the things you have packed for your first aid kit. If there is an asthmatic child, know how to provide their rescue inhaler. First, you're going to shake the medicine and then insert the mouthpiece of that medicine into the rubber sealed end of the spacer. Have the child breathe into the spacer 
in and out taking deep breaths while they're forming a tight seal around the mouthpiece or if they have a mask covering their nose and mouth. Press the inhaler and count to 10 between each puff. When children are allergic to food, stings, or bites, they can start having symptoms such as coughing, difficulty breathing, hives, confusion, dizziness, pale or blue coloring of the skin, vomiting, diarrhea, or severe stomach aches. This is known as an anaphylaxis reaction. These children usually have an epinephrine pen that is used during anaphylaxis. To administer the medicine, make a fist around the pen and pull off the gray safety cap. Place the orange end towards the thigh with or without clothing and press downward for 10 seconds. Remove the pen, massage the area for 10 seconds and call 911. Once you have help on the way, call the parents. If the child develops a burn, run it under cold water for 10 minutes. Protect the burn with sterile, non-adhesive bandage. Do not apply ointments or butter to the site. Do not break blisters. Provide pain relief with acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Call 911 if there's a severe burn or parents if it's a minor burn. If the child has been stung, remove them from the location. Remove the stinger if there is one by scraping with a cleaned credit card. You can wipe it down with alcohol wipes. Do not pinch the stinger with your finger or tweezers. Wash the area with soap and water. You may use ice, Benadryl cream, pain medicine, such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Call 911 if the patient has an allergy to that insect, if there is extreme swelling, difficulty breathing, hives, nausea, there are more than 10 stings, or if the sting is occurring within the mouth, nose, or throat. For CPR and Heimlich Maneuver training, we recommend certification. You can check out our CPR video on Facebook or YouTube for an overview as well. If you would like to get certified, please give us a call at 678-962-7337. Now that you are a prepared and qualified babysitter, how do you market yourself? You can use certain things like care.com, create a flyer, post it on a neighborhood newsletter or on nextdoor.com. You can email friends or family or make business cards. How much do you charge for babysitting? In Cumming, Georgia, the range is about $12.50 to $15 an hour. There is a range due to a few reasons. How many children will you be babysitting? The more children you babysit, the more you get paid. If it's far from your home, you may charge more for travel. You may charge for a weekend night versus a weekday night. The rate may be different if it's an entire day versus just for the evening. You may give discounts for recurring jobs. You might charge more if you have more experience. All right, well, I hope that was very helpful. If you do need to get CPR certified, please give us a call. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see others, you can like us on Facebook or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know what you think. Thanks. Bye.